Good evening. I respect and power are the words that come to mind when I think of you. I came to UMass just a few months ago, not knowing what to expect. But then I met you, and I knew that my teaching would never, ever be the same. I vowed you would get more because you deserved it. Plain and simple. You brought your authentic passions into the classroom and to your work. There was a persistence in your inquiry and zest, even given all your responsibilities, challenges, and anxieties. Pushing and pushing through. No holds barred. What happens when extraordinary women get together? They create, they debate, they learn, they explore, they strategize, they inquire, they make plans, and they find their way. They discuss thorny topics and difficult dilemmas. They express their frustrations, and believe it or not, sometimes they don't even know what to say. They welcome strangers, and they share their wisdom. You did all of that and more in our class. We focused on the policy problems that disproportionately impact women's well-being. We explored new theories to make sense of the origins of these challenges and tried on approaches to solving intractable, persistent trials that women face. We very seriously talked about how the intersections of a person's race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, nationality, and other identities and institutional structures create social challenges to require multifaceted and tiered strategies. I not only brought my scholarly lens to the classroom, but who I am as a black woman, with my experiences seared in my mind, in my being, and in my psyche. I wanted to push you to challenge and or clarify your understanding of social issues and bring forth the excellence in you. You succeeded, and really, really well. I'm reading those papers. <laughs> my hope and my wish is that we all can possess the boldness of voice and the communication of Bell Hooks, Myra Angelou, Rita Dove, Audre Lorde, Allison Rebecca Walker, and the tenacity and feistiness of Jane Fonda and Hillary Clinton, the heart and strategy of Marta Attell, CEO of Nike, and the heart and moral compass of Mother Teresa. I know that's a tall order. <laughs> so why do, we, why do we do the work that we do? Think of this, an equitable discipline by race, gender, and disability in school, sexual harassment and violence in the workplace and other venues, police violence against women and people of color, lack of quality daycare, particularly for lower income families, getting women and women of color in elected office, and much, much more. You will influence these issues we discussed. You will also influence these issues in the halls of Congress and community-based organizations, in the academy, and think tanks, and in the state house, and even in your homes. I'm sure some of you have made some ruckus in your homes. Is that correct? <laughs> That's what I thought. Yes, as evidenced above, women carry an extra burden. Yes, I often cry and I become frustrated and I clench my fists given all that we as women face. But then I rejoice when I think of you. Because if we have you in the world tackling what seems to be intractable inequities, I know that that little girl sitting uncomfortably in the corner will rise up and she will be bold because of the policies that you will advocate, you will create, and you will demand accountability for. You will forge a change in the state, the country, and even in the world. Use what God has given you, your intellect, your skills, and what we often don't talk about, your intuition. Intuition, as Susan Taylor, the former editor-in-chief of Essence Magazine, a black woman's publication, said, intuition is a higher form of mind than rational thinking. It is the synthesis of the heart, the mind, and the soul, working to expand awareness and understanding. It coaches us to be fair and to do the right thing. It helps us to stretch us and take, take risks, to keep loving and keep giving birth to our new selves. Trusting our inner voice is a particular struggle for women. Society's inculcated in us the belief that our feelings are marginalized and not important. Part of our work is to honor ourselves, 
and correct the historic devaluation of womanhood and define ourselves in terms of what it means to be a citizen of the world. The recognition and affirmation of our intrinsic beauty, richness, and grace are a particular necessity as a woman. My mother, who passed away four years ago, would be 94 tomorrow. She was my first example of a woman who lived in her own right. With civil rights, she was a civil rights and a woman's rights advocate who was bold with a social conscience that pulled her toward being a disruptor in places where she saw things that no one should ever, ever accept. As women, especially in these times, we must find safety and sanctuary inside ourselves before we can step gently or boldly into the change we want to see. As a mother, as my mother did, draw from what makes you who you are, be authentic, be fearless, be dogged in your method strategies and never, never be ashamed of who you are. What you think of yourself is how people will perceive you. But remember, in all your business and boldness, taking care of yourself is also a revolutionary act. Be dogged about taking care of yourself as well. Families and friends keep loving, encouraging, and dreaming for those that we honor today. They need the relationships and support of others. We don't do hard work alone without consequence. That's very important to know. Thank you so much for being the extraordinary women that you are.